My stream deck's broken. My microphone was on the wrong, wrong screen. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is brutal. Why? 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 Why, why isn't this working? What's up with this? You get. You get. Yeah. You kicked the, the door. Is broken now too. All right. Let's try something else here. We're gonna. We're just gonna keep going because I got. We got big things happening today. Don't you know? Like we've got guests coming. We can't just not work. We got people coming that are important VIPs. There, now it works. Cool. All right, what else we got? Good day. Let me say good morning to some people. Oh, good golly. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Beardsley, good to see you. Hi, Ditto. Hi, Dragon. Good to see you, my friend. Hi, Flat Cap. Thank you for the lurk. I appreciate it. And the sub. Thank you. Shinkans, 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 Shinkan. Shintan, Shintan, Shintan. Thank you very much. That was super kind of you. Appreciate that. Very, very, very awesome of you. The self-repairing door. No, the, the the trick with Dill, with with Ditto, or Dill, however you want to call him, is is the beaded curtain. You don't you don't want a door door. You want the beaded curtain, right? So that when when he kicks through it, he, he falls over. Because all the beads just kind of fly forward and then he just falls through the door. That way he just goes, you know what? I won't kick your door down anymore because it's beads. Basic auto crafting, Floor Island, Taco Network, Minecraft server, officially some basic auto crafting. Well, that's nice. I think, I, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, what's his name? Dre, uh, uh, DP has auto crafting stuff, but yeah. That's cool, man. I'll have to come over and visit. I missed Minecraft Monday this week, so if, I feel like I'm behind, so I'm gonna have to come check it out. Yeah, finally somebody, hey man, you want solutions, come to me. Uh, I've, I've said, I'm, I'm full of answers. They may not all be right, but I, I, I'll give you an answer. How's Gabriel today? So today's gonna be interesting, man. We're got we're, we're doing the Devo, starting up front, we're gonna be doing, it, doing a Devo, we're gonna talking about love and murder. So that's fun. And then starting at one o'clock, we're gonna have Dragon Daddy Bear and uh, and and Gherkinsteel. They're gonna be coming in and we're doing a panel. Like we're gonna be doing a, a, a Q and A. And I tell you what, we got some questions, man. What's, what I did is I actually asked the experts to write their own questions. <laughs> I'm like, here's, here's a list of questions from me, right? That I'm like, cause I'm fairly new at it and I wanna learn some stuff. And uh, and I saw, and then they get, they got, we got so many good questions, man. We may, we've got so many good questions. It's going to be a great panel. I'm really excited. You had a birthday. Did you really? Does that mean you were up partying last night? Does that mean you were up partying? Is that why? There's your dab. I love doing those. They're good for you. Although for as an old man, I got to be careful. You dab too hard and you can pull something. You got to be careful. Hi, Xanadu. Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Pineapple. Glad you guys are here. DP, he's seen the system, so but he has he has he built them, right? Does he have them or are you the only one that has them? And they hit the truth. <laughs> so uh what we should jump into the Devo quick because if we're gonna if it starts a conversation, we're gonna have to get through it because I'm telling you, 1 p.m. We got people that are coming. And they're going to be, they're, it, it, I'm, I'm a little nervous because it's the first time I've used guest star. So if you don't know what guest star is, you're not a streamer, that's fine. But if you're a streamer, you you know that, that guest star, the beta for guest star has come out and it's meant to be, you know, this big helpful thing. I've never used it, but we practiced. It seems to be fine. Yeah, by all means, ditto. Ask a question. I'm happy to, I'm happy to answer. wonder how far, how, how far behind uh, chat is. It feels like it's at least 45 seconds, which is a, a, an eternity. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. What's your, what's your, hi, nurse nerd. Good to see you. Oh, during the panel. Yes. Yo, it's AMA Q and a full dialogue. Yes, absolutely. Dude. 
Dude, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I, I, They know what they're talking about. Like, they've been playing for a really long time. Like, two years, one and a half years. Like, one's got level 90 characters. The other one's got, like, 50 level 80 characters. They, they know terms that I've never even thought of, let alone heard of. So, I'm really, I'm excited. Okay, well, there you go. That's cool, Dragon. Fire up. So right, let's get it. Let's get into the verse of the day, just so we can we can get that get through that before we uh, get too late here. There we go. So verse of the day today is where are we at? That one. Okay. So exclamation point VOTD or exclamation point Devo, and you'll get the verse of the day every day on the stream. If you're new here, every day on the stream, we do something I call the Devo, which is basically the verse of the day where we chat a little bit about the Bible, pick a theme from it like that we see in there, and then chat about it. We've talked about everything from from love to sacrifice to money to, to you know, depression, mental illness. We, we talk about all kinds of stuff, and it's all based on whatever the verse of the day is from from the logos company so we, we I don't pick it we just kind of go with what we go with and it's it's i enjoy it and i think the conversations are really valuable so i hope that's okay with you guys because it's a uh um or not okay with you that's not what i mean i hope i hope you're enjoying it as much as i enjoy it because it's i love i love doing the devos no i hear you man it's it's the 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 sometimes a panel you just sit there and listen but no we're gonna be yeah, he'll let us slide. Yeah, Gurk Shield will allow it. Good to see you, Gurk. He'll he'll allow questions from the floor. <laughs> I have no Pokemon ability. All right, you know what? For some reason, the my little my little thing here is broken. It's not it's not showing properly. Okay, whatever. Don't care. So the verse of the day today is First uh, Kings twelve twenty four, which says, "Thus says the Lord, you shall not go up." Or fight against your relatives, the people of Israel. Every man returned to his home, for this this thing is from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord and went home again according to the word of the Lord. It's this is we're gonna talk about fighting among brothers and sisters, fighting among relatives, fighting among churches. That's what we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna be doing it from first John. So let me pray and then we'll jump into it. God, thank you for the love that you have for us. Thank you for bringing us together. We only love because you loved us first. We only are able to sacrifice because you sacrificed first. We only do good because you are the one who does good through us. We have nothing if not for you. So I pray that as we turn to our turn to your word and we start talking a little bit about some of the more difficult things when it comes to relationships and being part of of uh, interpersonal things in churches and groups, that you'd help us. That you'd help us to to have humility and you'd help us to have openness and and most of all, to have obedience and see things your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Ukulele, good to see you. Hi, Jillikins. I'm happy from yesterday because I beat Super Mario Land 2 for the first time. Oh, really? I've still yet to beat a Mario. I like Mario. I've played Mario. I think maybe I think maybe I beat Odyssey, but like the bare minimum. So does that count? I got 65 out of the 120 stars. All right. Let's uh, let's get into it. So what we're gonna do? We're not gonna be we're not gonna stay here. So that verse itself isn't the verse that we're gonna be going with. It is a different verse. This one here. Do 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 do. That one. Okay. It, we're gonna be talking about for First John, chapter three, verse fifteen. And we're gonna be talking about loving one another. Yeah, I've, I. I have it. I, ha I have a little Nintendo right here. Right? I could, I could load that sucker up today and we could play it right now. And I could demonstrate just how terrible I am at Mario. I tried to play Lost Levels. You ever played Lost Levels? Ditto? Good gravy Lost Levels is hard. It really is. It's super duper hard. Okay, so let me read this. And what we're going to talk about is is relationships. What you're going to see here, as as you kind of go through the chapter, we're going to you know it talks about being children of God. You guys are all in the same family. You know, God has adopted you. Uh, you you know, this is what it means when you're a child of God. This is what it looks like. But then he gets into one of the problems that we see in churches, in families. We see it in in ev literally everywhere, and that is that 
sometimes brothers and sisters can't get along. Sometimes churches can't get along. Sometimes families can't get along. And there's an interesting couple lines in here that I want you to see to understand what it means when you're a Christian and having a hard time with someone. So let's, let's read it together. It says, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, right? We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and, and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life. Thank you for the follow, Solo Barba. Thanks for being here. Uh, we know that the, we have passed out of death and into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. So let's just pause there. What, what John is saying, now remember John is the one, the disciple whom Jesus loved. That's what he calls himself throughout the book of John. He, John wrote these three books, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and they're, uh, they're focused in talking to a group of people who's going through a hard time, facing persecution. The church is, is having a, um, a, arguing with among themselves, you know what I mean? And so what he says is, because you're saved, because you're loved, because you are part of the of God's family, because you were adopted by him, because you're his children, you heard, we all know this, that we should love one another, that it would be crazy for a Christian, someone who loves Jesus, someone who Jesus has saved, to be like Cain and murder his brother, right? That Of course, we don't want to do that, because, and, and it's, be, why did he do that? Because he was jealous, because his, he, he, when he presented his sacrifice, God didn't like it. And when, when Abel presented his sacrifice, God approved it. And he got mad and he killed him. So he says, don't be surprised, brother, that the world hates, hates you. Contrasting, you know, sort of the Cain and Abel thing, be able to say, like, don't be surprised that you're different than the world. Don't be surprised that there are people who won't accept you. Don't be surprised there are people who are going to hate your guts, going to upset themselves against you. And specifically within within the church, within the groups of people, within your family, within your brothers and sisters, your friends, don't be surprised when the people that are around you that aren't Christians don't get what you're doing, don't understand what you're saying, don't have the same priorities as you, and then get mad at you, get angry at you. We know that we have passed out of life into death because we love the brothers. What this, what this basically means is one of the ways that you know somebody's a Christian is if they love people who are in the church, if they love other, other Christians. It's one of the litmus tests for, is someone's faith real? If someone consistently is slagging the church, slagging, you know, pastors, talking about the body of Christ, like they're all horrible and would never go near them, they're all terrible people, you look at the, and you, you ask the question, you know, like, does this person love Jesus? Because Jesus says, if you love me, you love them. If you love me as the head, you're going to love my body. I am, they're my bride. Right? Like if you went to someone's house, you're like, I like you, husband, but your bride, I, I hate your bride. I'm, I don't like them at all. That that dichotomy isn't isn't good, right? That there's a problem there. And so he's saying in the same way, one of the ways you know you're a Christian, one of the ways that you can tell someone's a Christian is because they love their fellow Christians, right? Gerkenseal says, you would be surprised how many people said they didn't want to be friends with me anymore because they saw that I wasn't friends with them in order to get something. It was just because I love them. Yeah. And, and again, the, like, th that's the motivation, right? That's the idea of you go to them and like, I, I have unconditional love for you. I just want to hang around and help you. And they're like, I don't understand that because all the love that they've experienced has been cost benefit, has been give take, has been, you know, 50-50. Like we go out into the world and you hear that marriages are meant to be 50-50 and like, that's not how it is. Marriages are a hundred percent, a hundred percent. If one is giving zero percent, the other person is still to love, is still to sacrifice, is still to do good. The world doesn't process love like that. So then he gets real serious, right? He goes here and he goes, uh, whoever does not love abides in death. If you aren't, if you aren't, if you're, you're, one of the main characteristics of your life isn't that you're acting out of love, right? That you're trying to elevate people, you're trying to care for people, tell people the truth, show them, sacrifice, serve them, help them to, to know God's love better, be patient with them, loving, kind, you know, gentle. The If you're not working there, then you're working for the enemy. Because what's the opposite of love, right? It's, it's, it's not just hate, 
it's it's hate it's apathy it's working against it's taking abuse or or using right those are things that are sin those are things that, that lead to death so if you're not abiding in love the abiding in the love of christ isn't that what that means living in in the understanding that jesus loves you and pouring that love into other people right giving love to other people is then you are working for the wrong team you're you're abiding in death Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This is getting real serious, right? So we went from, you know, you're, you know, you're supposed to love people, right? And you don't want to be like Cain, right? And you know that, that if you really love Jesus, you're going to love his family, right? And you know that, um, anybody who is saved is going to live a life of love, right? And not death. Well, gets even more serious and says, if you hate your brother, if you actively despise fellow Christians, actively despise people who are, who are within the church, actively work against and, and are trying to harm or, or just speak again, angry against or slander or whatever other believers, remember, that's what it's talking about brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ, then you are as bad as a murderer right? You are, you're trying to destroy them and in their destruction, because you are not loving, you're abiding in death. That's what it's talking about, right? So the Barbara says, uh, understanding this love growing up really cult, really cultish culture in Brazil was very difficult. Let me read that again. Understanding this love growing up in a really cultish culture in Brazil was very difficult. How was, how, in what way? Because is it because the misunderstanding of what love looks like? Or is it because the idea of of loving other Christians and preferring other Christians and being with other Christians, the the bad form of that is this that cultish independence where the world you're against the world and and only the cult has has answers. You're not supposed to love anybody but the cult. Is that trying to balance those balance those things? Because yeah, that's not what it says, right? Because you go through the rest of Scripture is like love your enemy, you know, do good to those who persecute you. Uh, treat people like pagans and tax collectors. And how did the, Jesus treat them? We treated them with love, compassion. He treated them with patience. He went to their house. He took, he, you know, he worked miracles. He called, he went, he invited himself over. He, you know, like, that's how, that's how you're supposed to treat people outside the church. But this specifically is talking to Christians going, if you're in the church and you are like, you have a real problem with Christians, you have a real heart problem. Because one of the signs of a Christian is that you love other Christians. So the barber says, uh, most Christians in Brazil only love you if you're in the same church. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's not just Brazil. That's not just Brazil, right? I mean, obviously Ireland is the famous example of that, uh, you know, Catholic Protestant kind of thing, but you can go anywhere in the world, you know, go to, you can go to Germany, you can go to us. You, I mean, in, in the U S you've got individual churches that call themselves Christians and they literally hate each other because one's a Republican and one's a Democrat and one is, you know, is a person of, uh, who, who is trying to do generosity stuff and take care of their, their, their nation. The other one wants to talk about government stuff and they just, they hate each other. You know, that's definitely not just a, just a you guys thing. All right. Have a good one. Thanks for the lurk. Appreciate it. Um, and most of them didn't consider me a Christian because I have piercings and tattoos. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> Again, and again, the that's an external thing, right? This is this is why we're talking about internal stuff. Like, okay, you have piercings and tattoos, but <laughs> do you love Jesus, love people, serve them, and uh, prefer and want to be around and want the best for other believers and want the best for the people around you? Will you serve your your neighbor? Right? That's what we're talking about here. Or like the you've experienced, right, Sola Barba, which is, you know, you walk into a church and the church returns hatred toward you because of what they see. They return hatred toward you. They cut you off. They they make you. They say that you're not one of them because of your piercing, because of your tattoo, because of your because you come from the wrong side of the road, right? That is exactly what John's saying is wrong. That's sinful. That's murder. They were murdering you spiritually, right? They were murdering you by saying you're not a brother of mine. We we dismiss you because of your external choices. The same thing if you know when Jesus was confronted by sin, he would say, I love you and I want the best for you. Don't sin anymore because you're killing yourself. But he works a miracle. He saves, he helps. 
but he always ends with, you know, sin no more, but I want you to be with me, not because you're a sinner, get lost. That's what the Pharisees did. So we keep going. And uh, so the question is, if what if you do have a problem with other people, right? What if you really do have a problem? How do you know if you have a problem? How big is the problem? How much are you allowed to actually <laughs> you dislike people, right? By this we know love that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Right there. If you're gonna if you're gonna walk away with anything, the level of love you're to have for the believers around you, the people around you, is a sacrificial Christ like love. Right? We know that we we know that Jesus loves us because he laid his life down for us, and therefore as we follow him, we should be willing to lay down our lives for our brothers. But someone walks in, like you talk about Sola Barba here, right? Walks into church, looks a little different, you know, listens to different music. And instead of laying down your life for that person, instead of being thankful that they've walked in, instead of trying to discover who they are and who God has created them to be, you murder them before they walk in the door. That's exactly the opposite, right? Exactly the opposite. So the barber says, uh, dude, all my tattoos have Christian meaning. <laughs> and I made them because I know I'm involved with a community that will look at that and ask and give me opportunity to preach. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with tattoos. But the Bible says you're not supposed to know. The Bible says, don't become a cultist who tattoos the, the name of his pagan God onto his head as an act of worship. Don't do that. Okay. That's, don't do that. Right. Bible also says you're not supposed to get piercings. No, what it says is, don't, don't go into debt so much that you become a slave and that you're marked by piercing. And also don't join a cult where the sign of the cult is that you get your ear pierced. Don't do that. <laughs> That's what it's against is the whole cultist, you know, demonic worship thing. Not good for that. You know, that'd be bad, right? <laughs> Just, but it's not against like a decorative tattoo or against getting a pretty ear piercing. That's not what it's about. Um, let's keep going a little bit. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Right? One of the signs that God has changed your heart, hi Fluffy Buns, is when you see a Christian in need, when you see a brother in need, when you see someone who is around you in need, does your heart go out to them? Do you want to? If you have the world's goods, as in you've got stuff and you've got money and whatever, are you compelled? Do you feel like you need to go help that person? Because, you know, they're a brother in Christ. You're going to be with them for eternity. They're a sister in Christ. You're going to go take care of them, right? If not, the question that the apostle asks, right? If you're not compelled, if you don't feel the need to go help, if you're not pulled towards someone who's a brother in Christ, fellow heir to the throne, one of your adopted brothers and sisters, one who loves Jesus, if you don't feel compelled to try to do something for them, how can you say that you understand God's love? This goes right back to like, say the, the, the Lord's prayer or Jesus, you know, the Lord's prayer, forgive, you know, I forgive them as they forgive me. And then you go three verses down and it goes, if you don't forgive people, you will not be forgiven. Why, why are those connected? Because if you don't understand the forgiveness from God and how much you were forgiven, it means that you prove that by not forgiving others. But if you know how much you were forgiven, you're going to you're going to want to forgive other people because you recognize how much you've been forgiven. The same way, you, we know you don't understand love because you don't understand generosity. We know you don't understand God's love and how much He's given you because you refuse to give to others. That's that's what it's saying here. Praise on my time. <laughs> that's funny, Kirk. Um. But if anyone closes, yeah, uh, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth, right? Don't pay lip service to, to love. Like <laughs> you walk into someone and you hear about a need and you go, yeah, that's cool, man. Be warm and well fed. I hope that that really works out for you. Pfft, off you go. Right. It, the question is, you know, are you motivated to do something? Not that you have to go save everyone and not that you have to go give up all your stuff. The question is, where's your heart, right? You, do you want to help or do you not want to help? Um, we'll, we'll keep going. Uh, okay. The solo barber says, I grew up surrounded by Christians <laughs> yeah. 
and thought that I should always look my best when I go to church, always hiding when I was in a bad place. It took me a while to learn to share my struggles and accept from my church help, help from my church family. I'm truly grateful that God led me to a great church. That's a universal struggle. It's it's universally a problem. There are people who in this in in every country in the world, I'd imagine North America especially, that they have been taught, they've been told, if you come to church and you got an issue, you're burdening your church. If you come to church and you don't look right, smell right, feel right, you are your distraction to everyone else. You are people are going to judge you, people are going to get angry with you, people are going to going to you know like tell you to to wise up, or they're going to start giving you platitudes, and it's the worst. I, I, there was a story in um, an old Philip Yancey book about this woman who who she was you know she was really in a bad place. She had she had no money. She sold herself. She sold her. She even sold her three-year-old, you know, into the sex trade because she was so desperate for, for money and whatnot. Like she really went, you know, it was horrible. And when Philip Yancey asked her, he said, you know, why didn't you go to the church? Like, why don't you go ask for help from the church? They'll, you know, her answer was, I would never go there. Never. Like this person would rather sell themselves and their kid into prostitution than walk through the doors of a church why i i compelled to say it's because so many christians that they know are not marked by love right they don't see sacrifice they don't see generosity they don't see wow i really want to help people i wish i could help more what they see is you know poor people are a problem you know, mentally health, mentally ill people are a problem. People with learning disabilities are a problem. Anybody who doesn't match my my level of status is a problem. And anybody who doesn't come to a church fake in it is a problem. Like, that's what they see, right? Um, Girk says, uh, I actually I actually found, finally found a church to go to that I love when, that I'm not working at. It's awesome going to a place to be fed for the first time. I hear that, bud. Yeah, I, I didn't go to church without be doing things for 25 years it's it's something dragon says yeah i have heard that before my problem just comes with sharing my problems in the first place to anybody because i didn't grow up in the church i grew up in a bar room where i was more likely to get beat up i told anybody i was having a hard time yeah yeah and that's that's true it's really hard like from a pastoral perspective to convince people to take the risk right to actually say try me Come to me and and tell me what's going on in your heart. Come to me and share your problems. Come to me when you need something and I want to help. And I'm not going to gossip about you. I'm not going to call you dumb. I'm not going to turn it around, make it your fault. I'm not going to preach at you. I'm just, I just want to help. It's hard to convince people to do that because they're so afraid to, that they're going to get hurt more by the person they're asking for help. It's crazy that they'll go to a secular government. They'll go to a, a secular doctor. They'll go to a secular, you know, uh, anything. They'll even, you know, they go to a pagan for the sake of trying to feel better. But for them to walk into a church and actually say, pastor, I'm struggling with and I need, it's it's foreign to them. Um, Nurse Nerd says, I heard a story before that Gandhi would have become a Christian if not for the way he looked at the church. That Well, that's an old phrase. There's like that, that old thing where it's like, uh, what, what was it again? I, you know, I, I, I'd follow Jesus, but I've seen what Jesus followers look like or something like that. Yeah. Girk says, it's really hard to stay at church you worked at previously because people try to get you to do all the stuff you did for free. Yeah. I, yep. I agree. Yeah. Solo says, I'm truly sorry. It took me two suicide attempts to learn sharing my problem with someone actually helps. Yeah, it's really hard. And the same attempts for people around me to understand that I need to share. But that's, and that's the thing we, and I'm sure you'll say the same thing, right? Is, is saying, listen, it, the risk is worth it. When you bump into the right person, when you open your heart to the right person, when you find a Christian, when you find a brother that is actually going to love you, you know, there's nothing like it. Right? Yeah, there's some rough Christians out there. Yeah, there's some mean ones. Yeah, there's some wolves in sheep's clothing. But if you speak to a brother or sister, speak to a real Christian, it it's going to be different. Your heart will be different. Your your experience will be different. That's that's what you're going to do. You're going to experience God in a different way because you'll actually see His hand at work. 
Um, I think I think that's that's. Oh, well, I guess we can we can keep going. Uh, by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before Him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart; He knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him, right? What you see there is is sort of the, you know, you ever wonder why you're not getting answers to prayer? You ever wonder why worship isn't working? You ever wonder why your heart feels far from God? You ever wonder why your devos are cold, your spirit feels cold? It's probably because your heart is condemning you. Why is your heart condemning you? Because you're probably not in a right relationship with your brothers and sisters. You're you're not treating people with love. You're, the love of God isn't flowing out of you. Therefore, it's you're not feeling it. Therefore, that's why you don't feel connection to God. That's why you have no confidence before God, because you don't feel like he loves you. And therefore, you're not giving love to others. However, if you were giving love to others, if you chose to give love to others, you chose to open your life to others, God would be filling you up with love that you need in order to serve them. And then you will understand, you'll have confidence in him because you know he loves you. You'll have confidence to pray to him and ask for what you need because you know he loves you. Not because he's God up there and has power, but because you know he's your dad. He's your father who wants to actually give you things out of love. And you want to do what pleases him. And since you're doing what pleases him, you can ask him for things and he will grant it to you. That's that's what it's saying here, right? That comes from love. How you treat others and how you love others is going to affect your relationship with God and demonstrate the depth of your relationship with God. Uh, and this is his commandment that we believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. This is for all the basement dwelling, you know, blog warriors who refuse to walk through the doors of a church, refuse to, to go to an any kind of Christian group, refuse to do anything because all they do is argue, 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 right? Hi, Fluffy. Fluffy Bum's mom. Good to see you. Right? This is for the, the ones who can never find a church good enough, never find a pastor smart enough, never find a preacher better than them. And so they just stay at home all the time, arguing and fighting and yelling. It, you know, I'm saved because, you know, I know Jesus and I've got Reformed theology on my side. I'm a Calvinist. Right? But this, what this says is, listen, this is his commandment, that you believe the name of Son, Jesus Christ, and that that love, that belief, that faith bleeds out into love for one another. You need both, right? It's the same thing as faith without works is dead. That's what that's talking about. You can say you believe all you want. Unless you're demonstrating it, it's meaningless. Kirk and Steel, uh, or Sola Barbara says, uh, there are plenty of real faithful Christians um, that will help us grow. And Gherkenstiel says, the thing that makes me feel the most loved by God and helps me listen to him when I want nothing more than to go the other way is listening to worship music. And that's other Christians speaking into your life. Yeah, you're right. Yo, Jim, good to see you. Appreciate it. A few days ago, I called one of my best friends to try to schedule something so I can come down to his house and explain in more detail what's going on. Good. It's hard. And I know you've got a lot going on and I know you're going to feel like you're a burden, but if he's your friend and he, and he cares about you, then he wants to know. Let's finish up here and just kind of say, whoever keeps his commandment abides in, the, in God and God in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. The, you know, you have the spirit of God because you have a connection to connection to Jesus. And in, in that connection to Jesus, he, you understand his love and in understanding his love, you give it to others. That's how that works. Right, <laughs> light bulb moment. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> there you go. Girk, Girk got something out of it. That's good. That's what matters. I hit one, one, one little light bulb works for me. I'll take it. Um, yeah. So that I mean, that's the Devo, right? So the question is that for you, and we're gonna turn this into an application, right? And that's that's to say, when you analyze your heart. And when you think about your relationship with God, do you feel that flow? Do you sense that flow that God loves me, therefore I love him? He loves me so much I ask for provision from him because I know that he's a good father. And in that provision, and in that love, it flows out of me to even the most difficult people. 
when I go to church and when I go talk to people, when I see Christians online, when I bump into a Christian streamer, when I walk into the Discord, I'm excited because there are other believers there. I think it's great to be there. And I can't wait to share my love, share my burden, share my 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 worldly goods with them because I want them to be to feel love because God has blessed me. I want to bless them. Is that where you are? Or is it possible that you've convinced yourself that your relationship with God is you and him and doesn't need anybody else, right? Or that it's you and him and whoever you choose, but nobody who's difficult. Or you and him and whoever you choose, but the church, no, 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 because you've been hurt by the church. Let me just encourage you to process this section here, 1 John 3, and ask the question, are you obeying it? Are you seeing it? Hey, nerd, good to see you. Are you seeing that flow? God loved me, therefore I love others. God loves me, and therefore I ask for provision, and I give that provision to others. God loves me, and he gives me grace, and he gives me forgiveness, and therefore I give grace and forgiveness to others, right? Is that what you see? Is that what you see in your own heart? That's the question. We're going to jump to uh, we're going to jump to the question of the day, but let me let me pray before we do that, and then I'll get back into chat. Uh, God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for taking care of us. And we can't begin to thank you enough or to live in your love enough. But thank you that you've given us brothers and sisters, Christians, those who are here in chat right now, those who are who are listening, those who are lurking, those who are actively chatting, those who are in Discord, those who are around the Christian streamers we get to see all day. Thank you for them. We're excited by them. I pray that there are places in our life that we have hatred that we're murdering fellow Christians or we're, we're, we're not serving them or we don't love them or there's coldness in us that you'd show us. Because we we want to be more loving. We want to be more like you. We want to we want to feel your love more and in demonstrating that to others. But sometimes we don't even know our own coldness. We don't even see our own blindness. So show us so that we might experience you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Question of the day, QOTD, exclamation point, QOTD. And I'm just going to scroll up and see what people have been saying. Uh, Dragonheart says, a few days ago, I called one of my best friends. Oh, I already got that one. <laughs> um, Dragon Daddy Bear says, uh, I don't feel close to God. You should try. Uh, if you don't feel close to God, you should try walking towards him rather than away. Yeah, I mean, right? But still, you know, the the argument there is like, man, if I if I... If I go closer to God, he's going to judge me more. He's going to see more of me. If I go closer to God, he's going to ask me to change. If I go closer to God, he's going to ask me to do things that I want to do. So therefore, if I go hide, I can call myself a Christian. I can feel like I'm a believer, but not have to change. Right? The fear of God actually messing with your life prevents you from going to see him. That's. But you're right. If you want to feel closer to God, you want to feel God's love and know what it's like, you're going to have to get closer. And in getting closer... That that holiness, his 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 righteousness, his whiteness is going to show your grayness, and he's gonna try to clean you up because that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want you to be living in sin and error and foolishness. He wants to take care of you. Uh, Dragon says, "I mean, I don't have another word for it other than a uh, friend. We helped each other out of debt, saved his life. Once bought me a PC. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's a good guy. That's a good guy." If you had bad Wi-Fi, go closer to the access point. Yeah, you're right. Jillikin says, heck no. I am all for meeting fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. However, when it comes to finding a church, I'm still looking. But the reason I haven't because of the ones I've actually gone to are actually blasphemous homosexuals, elders, feminist priests. And I will agree with you completely that it's hard to find a good church. It is very hard to find a good church that loves you, loves each other, loves Jesus, preaches the Bible, knows the Bible, has a you know, care, you know, uh, caregiving for, for, you know, like, yeah, it's hard to find, right? But the question is, do you desire it, right? Do you want to be connected to a body of believers? Is it something you're, you're, you want to be towards? And yeah, you know, Dragon Daddy Bear says, every church has problems. You're, you're not going to a museum where everything is perfect. You're going to a, a hospital. You're, you're sitting in an ER. That's what church is. It's an ER full of sick, messed up people who are trying to get help from the doctor, you know? 
if you go to a museum and you see things going wrong, you're like, oh, this doesn't belong here. Let's get these, you know, get these yucky people out of here. Let's clean everything up. But that's not what a church is. A church is a, is an ER. So you should expect some bad things to be going on, some rough things, some sins. But the question is, how are the leadership, how's the leadership handling it? How are people, how are people handling it? Do you desire to be part of that group? Uh, question today, why do you think it's so hard for family members to get along sometimes? Why do you think, you know, because we can get along with our friends, we can get along with our work people, we can get along with volunteer groups, and somehow we just can't get along with the people that we're supposed to be getting along with the most, or that we know the best. So why do you think it's so hard? Sispano said, I've had a very real encounter with God and his love as a teen, God showed me what his love is like. It's undescribable, but being honest, I still struggle with that love. I think we all do. We can't, I don't think we can fathom that level of love. We, it's really hard. Um, Gherkensteel said, it's easy to find a good church. Just find one with Baptist in the name. Ha ha ha. And I wish. I wish it was that easy. You know what I mean? I wish they like had to do a, do a test in, <laughs> in order to have Baptist in their name. But like the worst church in, in United States has Baptist in the name. And so, therefore, bad, you know? I wish I could do that. That'd be great. Even the doctor is sick in the hospital. Yeah, I mean, you got a good point there. Yeah, but I meant Jesus, so... <laughs> but yeah, you got a good point. But if you're talking about, like, the pastor, yeah, he's got problems, too. Ukulele says, uh, one reason uh, is expectations. We put them on each other without agreeing to them, and then we get all upset when people don't meet them. That's it. That's very wise, you know? I thought you were going to do this, but then you didn't. Now I'm mad. At no point did I tell you I was going to do that. Yes, but I thought you were. And therefore, you know, I thought you'd react like this, but you didn't react like that. Therefore, now I'm mad at you for not reacting the way I thought you were going to. Right? I think you should share that because that's what I deserve. And you're not sharing that. Therefore, I'm mad at you. Right? You're not obligated to. But now I'm mad at you, right? Yeah. Expectations. Unmet expectations. So La Barbara says, uh, I'm so happy to see so many Christian streamers here on Twitch. Hopefully one day I'll come back to it. Dude, we're welcome to the Christian Ninja channel. I'm building an open, encouraging, and meaningful online family through gaming, real talk, and God's truth for the lost and lonely online and also Christian Christian content creators. We have a, a network called TACO, the Alliance for Creative Outreach, where we actually bring together Christian content creators for training, accountability to help them discover their audience, to know and to uh, discover the best way that they can be who God created them to be. That's a big passion that we have around here. Yeah. 